bass player and are watching this video, I really hope you know who this gentleman right here is. If you don't know, his name is Lee Scalar. Lee, or Leland Scalar, uh, has played so many bass sessions. I would guess possibly him and Nathan East would be probably two of the most prolific recorded, live playing whatever bass players in history. And guess what? Here he is. Memorex? I don't know. You tell me. Which one of us is real? He actually has more depth than I do. He's also wearing a wristband. I know. I, I lost my <laughs> wristband. I can't, I can't get parking validation. Oh, is that here. what it is? Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the bass player's bass player, if there ever was one. How well, you doing, mate? I'm doing excellent. What I'm a here. great meeting we had last night, huh? You saved my life. Oh, it was hilarious. You no, know, it was, it, it's just, it, this is always such an adventure coming to the NAM show. Of course. And uh, normally I spend all four days here and have a great time, but I was out working uh, on Florida, the East Coast. Right? Yeah, I was in Florida, so I flew in last night and I, I have my Sunday here to catch up with everybody and say hi. And it's, it's great. I love it. I love it. So for the very few people who don't know, some of the big, oh, actually, maybe they maybe know, but what I want to get is some of the big famous bass lines of all time that you recorded. You know, I mean, for me, I live so, sort of outside, but the kind of stuff people come to me and they talk about, they go like, your smiling face with James Taylor or Dr. My Eyes with Jackson Brown or uh, Stratus with Billy Cobham. Um, you know, I've, I've worked on, I don't know, maybe 2,500 albums. So It'd be it's safe to hard. say you and Nathan East would probably be the two most recorded bass players well, of all time, uh, right? Uh, Carol Kay. Oh, well, how could I forget yeah, Carol? No, no, well, oh, yeah, yeah. No, that's the well that so much of, so many of us drew from. Very true, yes. But, um, you know, I just feel really, I feel very blessed that at this point I'm still a working musician. That's all I care about. I think for me as a fan, the most epic thing was you getting five days notice to do a photo, not only show, but DVD. That was amazing. We, we did the DVD on the second week of the tour. Um, Simon and I would look at each other and kind of like six months into the tour and go, this would have been a great time to be recording the show because it had taken on a life all its own. But I was in doing uh, Lukather's solo album and Mike was just getting so profoundly ill at that point yeah. that they were about to cancel. They had like a year's worth of work left to do, and there was just no way physically he could do it. Yeah. So Luke said, look, is there any way you can do it? And they basically sent me a uh, copy of the show, and I just immersed myself in it for a week. And we did one rehearsal and then headed to Dubai to do the jazz festival. And, Amazing. And, uh, but so I, I love working under pressure. And, and the thing is, like, there were no charts involved. Because I'm the kind of player, if, if I had charts in front of me, it's real hard to get away from them. I and I that. figure I'm joining a band for this tour. I have to look like I'm in the band. So I just played the stuff like a, kind of like a lab animal. Like do we even sleep? Um, no, I, I, I slept, but I just, you know, because I, I just immersed myself in it. When I was driving around through town, I would have that going all the time. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hard thing to do, but I, I've done this many times. I did a, a one-off with Lyle Lovett, and, and I basically had to learn 35 songs to go do a, a corporate with him. Wow, how long did you have to prepare for that? A, a couple of days. And did you do that on a fan for an instrument as well? That's the other thing that blew me away, was doing that. Um, uh, I'm not really that concerned about if I'm playing a, a normal fretted or a fan fretted. Um, the fan fretting I absolutely love because so much of my work is replacing synth bass. Yeah, fair and enough. And guys that program synth bass love to be at the bottom end of the keyboard. So I really needed to find a bass that reproduced down in that register. And when I met Sheldon Dingwall, God, it's been like 15 years ago, um, with that extended fan fretting with 37 inch B string all those low notes read as notes and not just air moving. Sure. And, uh, but uh, still, mo all the touring I'm doing right now, I'm doing on, on the Warwick Star Bass. Oh, really? So, so this is what you're doing right now? That's the bass I use on tour. Wow. And so, that's the one that just got damaged by the airline. Yeah, which we were talking about yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's horrible. But so. you said you played it with tape holding the bass well, together. Well, it was basically the body got damaged, but the electronics were all intact. So like on this, where you're seeing it, I had a gaffer taped all the way up to that point. Wow, that's a long distance. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's all cracked. From this point up, it's everything in here is all cracked, and this this seam here is separated. Oh, you got to so love airlines, I, I don't you? I pulled it together and taped it, and then 
I mean, it still works, but um, they're taking it back to Germany and they're going to repair it for me and ship it. Because the thing that I love about this is it's not a custom base. Yeah. This is their model, and I'm playing an off-the-shelf instrument. Like, so a, lot of, a lot of guys, you know, they always think that the, the guys like me get all this custom stuff made from Some guys do. I really like having off-the-shelf stuff so that if there is a problem, I could just get another one sent to me, and it's not like it requires all this special stuff. The only thing I've done with this base that isn't standard, and they would probably do it if you wanted it, is... I put mandolin fret wire on all my bases. Oh, okay. It's the thinnest frets you can get. Yep. I've been doing that since the mid-70s, and I just love the feel of that. Other than that, it's totally stock. That's great. Well, yeah. see, there you go. So, as we've already discussed in other videos this weekend, some musicians really change their gear, but Lee plays it straight off the rack minus the frets. That's. Hey. I mean, yeah, and obviously you could grab one off the rack and just play it live. Yeah, I mean, if it's, anyway. not, if it's not a horrible instrument, I'll play anything. I, I've got a couple of basses that I bought at flea markets for like $90 that I love playing. Funny, isn't it's it? Not, yeah, and, I, and one of the worst basses I ever had was like a $10,000 bass, and I dumped it, and I'm not going to say who it no, was. No, of course not. But John Entwistle bought it from me because he wanted to hang it on his wall. Huh. And so I only lost a couple of hundred bucks on it. Well, there you go. That's amazing. Well, you must have an ex extensive, sizable collection. No, I'm not a gearhead at all. Oh, really? I've got about a half a dozen bases. Wow, that's and, and, they're, and it's only stuff that I use in the studio. Huh. Yeah, I sold a lot of stuff over the years, and I've given a lot of stuff away to... If I have friends that have kids that want to study, I figure it's better to start with a decent instrument, so I'll find something I haven't been using a lot, and I'll let them borrow it and, and have it. And if the kid really sticks with it, then I'll give him the base. I always tell him, look, if he doesn't want to do it, I want it back. Or if they have a daughter that wants it, I'll say, if they're not going to stick with it, I want it back, because I'll pass it on to somebody else. And I just gave a couple of amps to some friends that really couldn't afford a decent amp, and they're good players, and I thought they deserve a good amp. They're good players. Wow. See, there you go. You get to the top of your game and you remain humble. That's the way to get there. Stay humble on your way up, because there's a lot of branches to fall on on your way back oh, down. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. A lot of people have had that trouble. Yeah. Lee, thank you so much for your my time. My pleasure. It's great to see you again my after pleasure. you saved my ass last night. Ah, it's fine, mate. It's my pleasure. It's just time in place, wasn't it? You got it. It's, it's serendipity, as they say. Yeah, as they say. Okay, cool. Thank you.